For the exterior window trim on the tiny house, I went with a simple picture frame style. Let's have a closer look. The trim consisted of an inner and an outer piece, with the inner piece being two inches and then that outer piece sticking out two and a half inches. Both boards are an inch thick. And then the top and bottom ledges angle down two degrees to shed water. So off camera I did one side of the house and then saved the other for filming. And uh, there's several sized windows, but regardless of the size window, first you measure the width and then hang the um, tape measure on top of the hinge for these awning style windows. And I measured down to about an eighth of an inch below where the window um, meets. And then these measurements are from the inside of each miter on the end of a board for both vertical and the width pieces. So I tacked the frame together with the nail gun and then hung it on those hinges on top and then shifted up just slightly to where the hinges would not uh, rub on the trim. All the trim work was installed with a nail gun, first uh, nailing on that inner piece of trim. Then for the vertical piece of trim, I start out with a two and a half inch wide one inch board with a two degree angle cut on top. I line it with the top of the trim and then marked where it should be angled up to on the bottom and then I would go cut that on the miter saw. Then afterwards you nail both of these vertical pieces on either side of the window frame. With the overall width measured out I cut a two and a half inch wide board to length and then ripped a two degree angle onto its edge and that compensates for the fact that you cut a two degree angle on those vertical parts to shed water. It's so that when it is nailed in place that its face is flush with the vertical part of the trim work. And uh, just using a nail gun to get all that in position. And there's an example of what I'm talking about with the flushness. It just compensates for the angle on the vertical part. When it comes time to paint your windows, you're going to want to use a caulking to fill in any cracks and seams. And then I'm also going to use a spackling to fill in my nail holes. When it comes to the caulking, you can get caulking in different colors, which um, so that means you don't have to just be stuck with white. The advantage of that is, is when you're painting, if your paint ever cracks, splits, or you miss a small spot, if you use a, um, a caulk close to the color of your paint, it will show up less. In my case, you can see that I'm going to be painting the window trim the same color as my sashes. So I'm going to be using a gray caulking. This is made by DAP. You can see there, aluminum gray. So this will be a great way to not only uh, give it a more finished look, but to keep water from getting in places it shouldn't get. Applying caulk is pretty simple. It's just a lot of times pretty easy to shoot too much on there. So first I just go ahead, shoot some on there, the amount you think you need, and then smooth it all out with your finger. Also having a little wet rag around helps too. Um, then after it all set up, I went over it real quick with some pretty rough sandpaper just to smooth out some of the fuzzy wood and then started giving it a coat of paint, which is actually a solid stain. Well, the paint job on the trim is now complete. I still need to go back in on the sashes and paint the glazing compound, but uh, the trim is done. And I'm sure I'll mention it in the narration already, but the finish that I'm using is an Olympic solid stain. I'm using a Gibraltar gray for those of you that like the color. Um, and as far as my application goes, I applied two thin coats, which is what it says on the can. And while I say I applied two thin coats, they were probably uh, more on the heavy side than the thinner side. But um, it did good coverage when you paint the first coat. It really does. It'll soak in. The paint looks pretty, uh, I mean, the finish looks pretty flat. And then you'll see a little bit of the wood start to show through as it dries. That second coat really uh, makes it opaque and um, I think a really good coverage. It'll protect your wood. So... I guess we're pretty much done for this uh, step in the tiny house project. Be sure to tune back in for future uploads on more progress on the house. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to continue following along with the project, click the red subscribe button on the screen now, and you will get updates when I post future videos. Thanks for watching.